So we turned off a bunch of these image planes, but we do actually want to add one more light. And that light is, I need the explosion to cast light itself onto the ground. Same as before, you can go to the limits area and say, do a diffuse and or a volume limit, but then you're kind of just stuck with what you get and uh, it might be very faint or it may not just be what you want. It's nice to just, again, as usual, control ourselves. So let's make a light. I'm gonna call it the volume light, I'll call it volume light with a number just in keeping with all this. Our volume light will actually be of the type of a geometry light. Um, you'll notice there is volume light up here on the shelf. That's what this will make. It makes just a regular light, but the light itself is going to use geometry, and that ge geometry it uses is going to be a volume. So all the geometry light settings are all under area light options, which you can see here. So I would say point geometry object here to our render explosion and then point the material here to the pyro shader itself. We want to turn off normalized light intensity to area. We don't want, what this is basically saying is, if you had a small little sphere uh, illuminating or casting out this much light, but the sphere became then very big, it should still only cast out in total the same amount of light. It's gonna make the overall thing be dimmer it should be, to me, if it's getting bigger, if our explosion's getting bigger, there should be more light going everywhere. So don't normalize it, just let it be what it is. Um, and finally, just in general with volume lights, you should be using enable point cloud because it speeds it up quite a bit. So let's see what that looks like. The downside to enable point cloud is, at least when you're doing these interactive renders, you have to click render every time you change something. It can't reuse the scene where you make those like quick changes where you just change the color, you just change a, I mean, you could just change the intensity quickly, I suppose, actually on it. But if you change like the material or the volume that it's pointing to itself, most settings you'll have to, you'll have to do that. So now we've done it, but we don't really see anything. So as usual, let's just make it really large. And now we can see something. We can see some of that light going around. I should say we should look at an earlier frame because the explosion's mostly dissipated by now anyway. So let's go to like 21. And again, same thing. If you change the frame, previously it would just work, uh, but now that we're using this point cloud optimization thing, which really does help quite a bit, so it's totally worth it, but you will have to click render every time. You might even consider just turning off the auto redo thing, the auto update thing. But so we're seeing a, a pattern here where it's very grainy. I mean, it probably shouldn't be that bright. So there you go. So we can see that it's right. It's technically right. You know, there's light inside of the volume and it's getting blocked by the density in a lot of places. And it ends up with this certain amount of graininess. You can fix this. This is this is accurate, but in order to fix this uh, in the best way possible, you have to give it a lot more samples. And even then, like, if even I focus all my firepower here on this one cube, I mean, not only will this render take forever, it will still probably be a little grainy. So you'd have to put like some insane amount of samples on this for this ever to be perfect. So what you end up doing in this kind of situation is don't do this, even though it's more accurate. And if you have nothing but time or a render farm or whatever, then I guess do do this, because this will be the most accurate. What I'm proposing is that we don't have the actual smoke density block out any of the light. So you'll still get, you know, as, as tendrils of flame come this way or this way or where it gets bigger and stuff, without the density, we'll still have those flame tendrils light up the ground and things roughly where they are. So you'll still feel the interactive nature of the light, but it won't be totally accurate again because we won't have the smoke obscuring it. Because it's the smoke that's 
giving us this grain problem. So put it back to sample equality, especially for you, who again, presumably, you or me, who's doing this at home on their own computer. It's just way too expensive for a little bit of accuracy that who cares. So how to fix this? Uh, for one, turn off self-shadow. That will get us started, but still not really gonna help. It's not gonna work overall. But that self-shadow turning that off says to the light, the light shouldn't block itself, you know, by itself, because the light is pointing to the actual volume. And so the light has a chance to do that. However, it still mostly have the same problem. And that's because our ground Mantra render, we asked it to for it to cast shadows. We said, make this be a phantom object. So even though the light uh, is not going to self-shadow itself based on that volume, it's still colliding with that volume anyway. Colliding meaning it's still having shadow rays hit it. So what we can do is we can say, have the volume light itself never consider that. So go to the shadow, and the shadow mask basically should have everything should be in its shadow mask, except for, or rather, except for, that's a, that's a carrot above the six, render explosion. If you click on this, we should see all the lights are selected except for render explosion. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna get much brighter. So it will be doing what we want now, but now that a lot of the light's not being blocked, it's gonna be, this will probably be too bright, 10 will be way too bright. But it's going to be way faster now. Now it's nice and smooth, and it's very, very fast. So now it's just a matter of bringing it back down to reality. And there you go. Perfectly smooth. And it still has complexity to it. It's still going to, again, as I was starting to say earlier, as things move around, you'll see the light move around and stuff. So it's still going to give us the impression of interactive light, even if it's not, again, accurately being blocked by the smoke and whatnot. So that's really, honestly, good enough for our volume light. If you want to see earlier frames, remember, just stop the render first, then start it again because of the point cloud thing. Um, if you turn the point cloud thing off, it will look a little worse and it'll take somewhat longer. Um, but you would, I think, technically be able to switch frames easier. But there you go. So we have something. And that will also live in its own plane now, and we'll be able to play with that as well. So let's save that, and I'm going to say let's just write all these frames out to disk. So there's a result of that. Also, you know, again, pretty fast renders. They're not grainy at all. They look good, and they get the job done, even if they aren't technically as accurate as they would have been if we took into account the smoke from the volume. But nonetheless, same thing. We got our cool light shadows. We can control them all independently. And our volume light thing here, if we want to dial it up or down as we go later. So that's it. Let's go bring it on the comp now. Actually, should mention one thing before we go to comp. Um, you know, we took the volume light. The volume light was to cast the light from the explosion onto the ground. And so in that way, we were like, oh, we don't actually don't want it to shine on the explosion. In another similar way, currently our mantra node is going to be using all the lights in the scene. So their explosion should not have any light cast on it from this light either. So we need to make sure that we don't. So under the candidate lights here, do that caret again, the you know thing above the six, and say volume light one. So pretty much the same thing that we did uh, over here with the carrot, but just with the light this time. So candidate lights, look at it, same thing. We should see all the lights still. Now I don't plan on re-rendering this in this lesson, but you know, presumably if you wanted to re-render it, but because you, you changed stuff, we don't want it to be wrong. So exclude this light because it would just add more light into it than the approved look that we kind of just had. So that's all. Um, you might experiment with it. You might try using the volume light to get even more scatter, but our, our current scatter paradigm is super fast and works great. So 
this is just going to be a slower way of adding some more scatter in. So it's probably not, we probably don't need this light. But anyway, save that. Let's move on to compositing now.